Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream. Today, Ron Nicoletti, along with Brian Nano. A sultry Friday morning <laughs> here this, a this afternoon. Uh, fast main track. Of course, we got the all-weather Tapita. And we got a nice, uh, I think, what do we got? $250,000 gross jackpot guarantee in the Rainbow Six, which will kick off in race number four with yeah. this nine-race card. That's no. It's also known as a quarter of a million dollars. So get involved. A tough sequence today. I'm interested in seeing your ticket coming up in a little bit. And uh, it grows quickly, Ronnie. And and uh, if nobody hits it pretty soon, we're going to be getting big numbers. But with that being said, there's been several times uh, over the past, what, uh, six or eight racing days, where in race number nine, it's been eligible to be swept. Yeah, you know, we've had some of the horses figure in the race. Yeah. You know, it's not that just, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 50 to one shots that were alive. So a, g a great time to play when it's early on in the week on a Friday or something like that. Chance to take it down. Uh, you know, I'm talking about being interested in seeing tickets. I'm going to be interested to see your ticket in the first race, which is going to be six and a half furlongs maiden claiming two-year-olds with eight in the field mm -hmm. because the whole race is replete with first-time starters. And the horses have ran... Mm. I agree. <laughs> I agree with that wholeheartedly. So we'll take a look at it. A little bit kind of a pyramid thing going on. We'll go three deep here with back-to-back -back singles in race two with uh, drop quick, drop kick queen. Say that quick, P-I-L-O. Uh, pretty heavy favorite on the morning line. Then number seven, pudding. Our old buddy pudding in there is going to be really, really tough. Here's the spread in race four with my long shot play, Astonishing Annabelle on top. And then the deep spread is in that fifth race because, like you said, you know, there's a lot of first-time starters in there, and I want as much coverage as I can get. 2250, not too bad. 2250, and the current, uh, always good when you're putting your early pick yep. five tickets. Now, it's very early in the wager, and the current tepid favorite at five to two is the number two, uh, Gerard. I did go with the inside horse, and I'll kick it off, and that's the number one, Smooth Motion, who's the son of cross traffic, debuting for Victor Barboza Jr., uh, who is a solid. I want to show you what he does with his two year old, first time starters, maiden claim as this is. He's 12 for 47, 26%, 49% in the money, 438 is the return of investment over the past five years. So I'm just playing the percentages here in the first race. Got to deal with the inside post, but you get getting MCL Jaramillo in the saddle, uh, maybe this is the way to go. A little cool on the board, but very early in the wagering. Well, you said it when we were talking about my pick five, that the afternoon runners haven't really distinguished themselves, so smooth motion isn't, isn't going to have to be, uh, you know, flight line to beat this field. Let's just be honest. You're going to have to break from the rail. There's no doubt about that. The stat certainly plays. Jaramillo's here, and I've certainly got this horse in my mix as well. The number six horse is where you went, and that's Cajun Occasion from Kathleen O'Connell. This one has had a couple of starts and tried drop last time out. didn't work out that well. It didn't, but the post was not, was a little problematic, and this is a horse that's been either outside or broken slow in both career starts. Edgar Perez is now going to try it, third different jockey in three starts, and name jockeys in both of the first two. So, you know, there's been some hope, comes out of the turbo race, didn't, you know, didn't run for 35 last time, and now bumps up for 50. I think that's a pretty good sign. If nothing else, maybe we get a little better. The other thing I like here too, Ron, that was on the Tapita last time. So we're now going to run on the main track for the first time without a or in for a tag, not in the maiden special weights. Maybe that's the wake-up call. And that horse was favored last yeah. time at two dollars two, four, two dollars and forty cents to the to the dollar. So uh, the other guy went all first time starters in there. The number eight Aldo's Dream, who's the son of Always Dreaming, who's going to debut for Jose D'Angelo, Sonny Leon, named to ride. Uh, I think you watch the tote. They look yeah. taking money up there. I think that's what you do in this first race. Fully agree. A couple of these works are pretty snappy. Like Ronnie said, check out the toad as we draw in on post. And I like this outside post here because we don't have to worry about what's going on down inside. If there's traffic, if there's some bad behavior, we're outside all of it. And there's just a wide open first yeah. race. So, I mean, if you have a single, and I think everybody in America might be singling, uh, what's the name in the third, putting in the third race. So if you go deeper in there for your early pick five ticket, might be the way to go. Race number two this afternoon is seven furlong maiden claiming Philly, two-year-old, $16,000. Scratch the number six, Incentable Eva. And the, I went with the number four, and I think this yeah. was one of your singles, a drop kick queen. Yeah, I mean, she's she's every bit of nine to five. Let's just let's just put it that way. The maiden special weight dropper, Jerry O'Dwyer, has gotten a little traction over the last week or two. Horses are are running better. He's won a few races as well. Uh, I know this horse didn't take any money on debut, but that was in a maiden special weight. Did chase early and tired late. I would think now this daughter of uh, commissioner puts her best foot forward. 
Yeah, and that race turned out, produced yeah. a couple of next out winners, and the horse that ran uh, third in that race, trust me, came, I mean, trust me, won it, came back and ran third in the Desert Vixen yep. Stakes, so it turned out to be a pretty fruitful uh, maiden special weight, and the drop's certainly going to help this horse this afternoon. The number five Poetic Union is dropping to this level after failing to get untracked in her $25,000 career debut, so I found a, a stat on Armando De La Cerda with his two-year-old second-time starters under maiden claiming conditions. He's solid. He's 9 for 33, 27%, 48% in the money. Big return of investment of $4.19. So it looks like he gets him rolling in the second start, especially when you look at that stat. Yeah, and the other thing I like, too, is, you know, this is not necessarily a first-out barn, and you can kind of see why with that no. stat. Well, this horse was about 7 eight to one on debut in a nine horse field. So they bet this horse a little bit. She, you know, she ran okay. She ran like a first time starter that probably needed a race. You know, don't, don't lose sight of the fact that the winner ran off the screen. So she was really only beating about three lengths for second. I expect her to move forward as well. And I think she is the main danger. I don't think it's any surprise, Ronnie. We've got this exact in order. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Use the three and uh, third and that's roll gypsy roll drop it for Laura Cesaris. That's all it is. Yeah. Maiden special weight drop. Maybe that's the wake up. It's the biggest drop in all of racing. Did you I think the seven might have some speed in here. I, that was the only thing. I, I thought that there's no speed, no no pace. You know, it cuts back to seven. Frolong's made that middle move. Maybe this one could be in the first flight, if not yeah. on the lead, somewhere around. Thought maybe you throw that one in like both Brian and I did in race number two. Uh, race number three this afternoon, five and a half furlongs on the fast main track. Starter allowance for three-year-olds and up started for 25 or less. And somebody knows how to read the condition yeah. books perfectly in here because you would think Pudding would never be eligible in this race. And just drop it to the 25 level, as we mentioned. Followed that second, the classy Willie boy in the grade three spin. Victory over who? Gatsby who came back and won on Sunday. He beat Collaborate on Sunday. We'll take a look at that race last time. You know, there's not a lot going on here. It's just more to show you how good the form is of putting right now. Here he is down inside the four horse. Gatsby on the outside. King Cab doing his thing as he always does blasting away early and Gatsby ran this day and he made Pudding run him down and to Pudding's credit he did and he's going to draw off late and you know we saw Gatsby now and I think there's no doubt that Gatsby the old Gatsby that we know and love is now back and they've got him credit to the team uh, at Arendelle and Carlos David for him getting back to find his form well Pudding runs him down on the square here it's a big effort and yeah you and I were talking in the office it's not on my page in my past performances but somewhere along the way Liz Dobles and and uh, an imaginary stable claim this source for you know 25 or less and here he is getting to play here and uh, he's six to five on the morning line and I don't think you're going to see that either because uh, he's going to be a short number as he should be. Yeah, strictly the one to beat. Now, the number four horse is where I went in second. Yes, I am a beast. He was turning back slightly and coming, coming off the bench today. Made that first, making the first starts and, uh, you know, setting the pace in the smile sprint. So, uh, you know, I just thought this horse with Rohan Crichton uh, teaming up with Embassy El Jaramillo. Quick stat when these two hook up uh, over the last couple of years. They're 15 for 46, 33%, 65% in the money. 190 is the return investment. Just, you know, I'm on the, on the pudding bad wagon. Yep. too, but I'm thinking, yes, I'm a beast. Uh, just the connections alone. It's a seven-time local winner. Maybe this one could be on the exactor up there uh, at a little bit of a price. He's got a lot of speed. There's no doubt about that, and, and he really had no chance with that the way that race went last time, and listen, he's not a great three-horse anyway, but he's dueling up front while Willie Boy and Pudding are sitting back and, and licking their chops. I, I don't want to speak for you, but I think we were both okay trying to get Smiling Tuffles and trainer Danny Hirtek's done a really good job with him, but just getting him out of the exacta because his race last time was so big, I don't know yeah. if he can get back to it. Yeah, but he used his store close style to win three of his last four races. Does he see that same yeah. pace scenario uh, that afforded him the recent success? Danny Hirtek, Edgar Prado, they're good together. They're like 27%. Trainer Danny Hurtak has been having a big, big meet. Uh, cutting back from seven, too. That's a little dicey now because we're going five and a half today. That's a little tricky. Small reason you got up there 21 on the well, morning line. Suddenly, they only won last time out. Well, again, okay, I, I, I don't want to give you a... $5.80 exacta <laughs> with Pudding and, and Smiling Tuffles. So I'll throw a bomb underneath. Maybe he can pass some horses late. Can he beat Pudding? Absolutely not. But he might just kind of reap the, the benefits of maybe a speed duel of everybody getting fried. Well, let's take a short break, and maybe we'll have some pudding, then we'll be back for the Rainbow Six.
we're ready for the start. They're off. Welcome back to Gulfstream today, Ron and Brian, about 11.40 a.m. Fourth race today is going to be six furlongs on the fast main track. Starter optional claim at Phillies, two-year-old, started for 25 or less. Well, that same tag, scratch the number six, Miss Aria, more importantly, kicks off the Rainbow Six with that $250,000 gross jackpot guarantee. Let's take a look at my ticket this afternoon, $43.20. Guy, we'll talk about the fourth in a minute. The fifth race, as you mentioned, pretty wide open, but I did go with Kiki Love, six TT's woman in this nine dream and style on top of my ticket. In race number six, three deep at the crossroads, uh, roads, excuse me, Angelic Gal and Weld Hall. I'm taking a little bit of a shot with my best bet today with Starship Wizard, who's six to one on the morning line. Season Figueroa teaming up with Edgar Gonzalez. They do a good job together. Race number eight, I kept going back to Parkland, Parkland, but I put Lake Amama on there. And I got coverage in the last. My long shot is Black Seal, but big scratch in that race. That's just so wide open. So I went four deep in there to keep it at 43.20. If uh, I've got a little bit of a cough tomorrow, you know why, because I might, might have swept this thing. It's out there today. <laughs> it's a sequence that you can have some fun with. And uh, I don't know. I feel like uh, it's, there's some prices in here, too, that we're going to talk about one in a second. You've got your long shot in the last race. There's races today that could really blow this thing up. Well, I started race number four. I'll kick it off with here with Lee Boyano, who drops and stretches out to uh, six furlongs on the dirt, followed her 25 maiden score. Now, that was going five and a half. It was that sealed sloppy track that day. Comes back, sets the pace on the torpedo against the bias, and, fit, and runs okay in the $65,000 sharp Susan Stakes. She ran fine, and, and I have no knock against her, but she's going to be a very short price. There were only, you know, it was a short field that day in the stakes. I don't necessarily trust that race. Ronnie told you her only claim to fame on the main track was a sloppy win. So it's like, okay, yeah, if you like her, you like her. But if you don't, you're allowed to look elsewhere. You're allowed to go shopping. I respect her. I respect the barn. Um, I was comfortable trying to fade and beat this horse today. So if you have on top, I also used on my ticket, and that's the three astonishing Annabelle who drops. Cuts back to three quarters of a mile today. Let's take a look at the replay. Okay, she's a maiden. What is she doing in here? Jorge Delgado does not run horses where they don't belong and where they don't fit. Now watch her down here. She's a three horse. Easily pick her out there. And uh, she's going to check out of it here a little bit. And eh, that's not what you want. Now she's got to re-go into Chantel's credit. She gets her back rolling a little bit. Um, I thought she ran better than it looks in here. You're going to see her now really late because she drops out of the picture. Now she threads her way back through. Good job, Bob. She's even steady in here just a little bit. And when Chantel finally kind of gets her in the clear a little bit in the stretch, I thought she ran on. She's going to be second, by the way, okay? And I understand she was also nine lengths behind the winner. I get that. But did you think she was going to run everybody but the winner down from here? Absolutely not. So I give him credit for this effort. Um, it's just sometimes, Ron, if it looks way wrong, sometimes it's right. And the fact that this horse is in this race, he doesn't have another horse in here, nothing like that. I thought she was very interesting. And I think if she can finally get clear running, and here she is, gotten it out there for a second, she's a nice price to him. It's wrong, it's right. What'd you say? If it's yeah. wrong, it's right. This guy thinks he's Pluto here or something. <laughs> <Give> it out. <laughs> Pluto. If it's wrong, it's right. If it's right, it's wrong. If you win, you win. You still win. <laughs> Whatever he said. I, all right, I agree with you. I got it on the ticket for the reason you mentioned. Oh, without a doubt. What about Get a Grip, Maryland? This one is stepping up to face winners after drawing clear. Really was good. Defeated those 25 maidens by eight plus lengths. It's six for a long debut. Gets the acid test today. Yeah, and she did well to draw outside La, La Boyana. That's for sure. And I'll tell you what, that race was huge. I don't really know <laughs> why, but to Larry Bates' credit, he had her ready to roll. And that was a powerful effort. She steps up today, faces winners. You know, she's not in the 25 maiden claiming ranks. You want to just look at that race? It was darn good. 
And they had a bunch of people here in the walking ring, all dressed up. They sort of knew that this horse was going to run well. Maybe they'll be too They well. might have. Yeah, we certainly <laughs> did, as usual. Fifth race today. He's five and a half furlongs. Made in special weight Philly, two-year-olds. Scratch the one. A couple of jockeys. It looks like they switched him around here yeah. a little bit. TT's woman's going to be ridden by Edgar Zayas. And Luca Panici is going to ride the seven. Kiki Love and Brian put together that late pick five ticket. No real uh, opinion here, so we'll go five deep, and we'll get into this race in a second. The ticket's $50. It's about right at my, my limit. I went with the proven horses in race number six. Well, one of them, uh, four or five is the order with Nucci on top. Here's the single. My best bet of the day is Rothgar in race seven. We'll show a replay of that. Here's the big spread, Ron, in race eight. Top pick is Venezuela and Triumph in a race that I thought was a spread race, a replay coming up there. 27 is the order. Strong again. I lost my top pick. Win no joke comes out of that race in the last. Wow, we are different on that. Mm, that's like good. That. That's good. I like this. I'm not this fifth too much, but when we get down, we got our <laughs> dueling best bets in race number Ooh, seven. So baby. we'll see how that plays out. Five and a half furlongs, maiden special weight Philly two year olds, as I mentioned, scratch the one. And those jockey changes or it's switching around, we'll call it. I did use number seven, Kiki Love, the only entrant in the field with previous experience. Wheels back after dueling for lead and fading to finish third against those state bred special weight runners going five and a half. This angle's been good to us, uh, you and horses that have previous experience. Yeah. Rowan Crichton, Luca Panicia, as I mentioned, third career start. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I certainly, the firsters are going to have to run a little bit today if they want to beat Kiki Love because uh, she really improved. In her second start, uh, this is an open company made in special weight. She's coming out of Florida bed races, but not only the experience, but she's outside too, which I really like as well. And listen, it's Rohan Crichton, and you, you, know, you know what you get there. You're going to get a Barnett sending out live horses time and time again. Yeah, and the first time starter, I think you have to use the one you have on top. TT's woman, the number six, hundred and fifteen thousand dollar daughter of Sharp Azteca, debuting for Safi. He's good with his freshman runners. You know, we mentioned a lot. He maybe he's not that you know sharp with with uh, with his first time yep. starters as far as two year olds, but that number is getting better and better all the time. As Ronnie said, I, I feel like two months ago that number was 12%. It's up to 17% now. He's firing. Uh, these sharp Aztecas have been running as a freshman uh, sire, but running on the turf a little bit more than the dirt, but obviously he was just a crack, crack sprinter. Works don't jump off the page, but then you got to go back a little bit. Check out that Palm Meadows work on July 16th, Ronnie. This horse can hum a little bit, I think. Number nine in here, Dreaming in Style. You have a little further down. I have a third. It's the daughter of uh, Gervin, who's just been a great sire. I think mm -hmm. second leading sire, yep. or third leading sire, freshman, freshman sire, debuting for Eddie Pleaser Jr. String a solid workout showing over the track. Kevin Krigger, his go to rider, will be in the saddle. So they've been going good. Yep, I, I agree, and that's why I put this horse in the mix here. I, I, you know, Eddie's only 8% with first-time starters, and his second-time starters, I believe the number is about 28%. But this horse might be able to run a little bit. You look at the bullet there in mid-August, and, uh, you know, they paid a good price for a Gervin, too, as a 2-year-old, which I like, at this, especially at this time of the year. And uh, this isn't really a barn you want to get beat by if you're spreading in this sequence. Looks like six, seven, seven, six. But you know these races, we'll like see. you went deep there, it's wide open because if these first-time starters, like you have Haile Ahad, he's going to be a price. You know, with Nick for Nicholas Palmer, with Sonny Leone in the saddle. Yeah, and the other thing too is that we we kick off well, and even in the rainbow, you can check the double wheel pace when you're playing this pick five. Make sure you check the tote board out because there's like Ron said, everybody's a first-time starter, but one. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to see TT's woman up there at nine to one. That would not be a good. Time. Race number six this afternoon. Six furlong maiden claiming Philly two-year-olds. $50,000. Seven in the field here. And let's start it off with a horse there. You got six to one from Cam Gambolani, Nucci. Yeah, I thought it was significant that uh, he's going to reach out and uh, get Lionel Reyes to ride, and, and I think that's uh, that's positive. C.J. Thoroughbreds does a good job, you know, with buying and, and, and with their horses. Uh, some of the works here don't look too, too shabby either. And uh, let's just be honest, everybody that we've seen run in the afternoon hasn't really distinguished themselves. So maybe Nucci can run a little bit. Um, a daughter of Connect, we'll see what we get today. Cam doesn't have a win at the meet, but he's been sending out live horses. The barns has been a little snake bit. The number five horse in here at the crossroads is turning back to three quarters of a mile after following her state-bred special weight 
debut at the distance in which she was, uh, you know, she was second. She prompted to pace third against open special rate runners going seven last time out. Marcassi drops. This is a $230,000 daughter practical joke. So she's in for 50. So a bit of a tepid nod. There. Yeah, you just said it perfectly. I mean, so that's a good segue from Nucci. You want six to five at, at the crossroads? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't disagree with the six to five. I think that's probably spot on. And you said it. She's in for 50. She's run twice. She's hit the board twice. And now you can have her for 50. Yeah, that just that rubs me the wrong way a little bit. You're going to get an underlaid price, and, you know, she hasn't shown a lot of starch in the stretch either. The number six, Angela Gal, is hoping to make amends after ducking out at the start prior to finishing fourth as the favorite. That was her career debut at the distance for Kathleen. Uh, I found the stat of Kathleen. I thought it would be a little bit better, but it, it is what it is. It's not that bad. Two-year-olds, second-time starters, maiden claimers, eight for 59, 14 percent. 36% of money, but somehow a positive revert, re, you know, return of investment of $2.19. That seems impossible. Yeah. And the, uh, the Kathleen fan club, uh, the line forms behind us because right. we have a lot of respect for this barn. This horse was favored. You know, honestly, Ron, just looking at it on paper, she kind of ran like a horse that might need a start. She shows speed early. She tires late. Now we've got that under her belt. It's behind her. She draws well. There's no world beaters. I would expect this horse to move forward in a good way. The number three, Weld Hall, is the daughter of German. Here we yep. go with Eddie Pleaser Jr. Similar situation as the previous race. And, and once again, you watch the toad action. He's not known to have him cranking up, talking about Eddie Pleaser Jr. And he's got his go-to guy, Kevin Krigger. Yeah, that's a positive here. We'll just see what you get from this horse. I'm, I'm kind of apt to watch one today, but if the money's showing, you probably want to take a little bit more notice. And, you know, a Gervin that, that, that Ronnie said, they've been very, very live, is in for 50, so it's not like they're giving this one away either, so maybe she can run a little bit. Race 7 this afternoon, about a mile 70 yards on the speed of claim is 3-year-olds of 4 and up non-winners of two races in life. Scratch the number 4, C. Como no. And uh, you have, this was your best bet in here, yeah. I believe, Rothgar, and let, let's... Uh, Tell me why. Yeah, well, I'll show, show you, me we'll why. Show you why. Yeah, exactly. We'll take a look at the video here. Finishing order in this race, okay? Eight, nine, five. So here's Rothgar. Uh, where are we? He's the nine, okay? And he's going to be forced to make first run here. Eight, nine, five is the order. So here's Ghost and You, the winner, just kind of licking his chops. Rothgar's got to go up and make first run. The horses he's making first run into, they're nowhere to be found. The nine, eight, uh, eight, five, nine, excuse me. The five's just coming into your picture now. And so here's Rothgar, the only one in this race that was up front early that stuck around late. He was beating a neck, Ronnie, for Amador Sanchez that day. And that barn has struggled, admittedly, at the Royal Palm meet. Well, here comes Jorge Delgado off the claim, 31%. We get Edgar Zayas, and uh, I think this horse is heck to pay in here today. He does not want to give it up to Ghost in You. This was a monster effort by this horse, and hopefully we're not. It, it didn't take too much out of him. Now off the trainer change to an absolutely prolific barn. Look out. I went with the horse that actually ran fourth mm -hmm. in that race that got bopped around a little bit at the 316 pole, and that Starship Wizard was going to turn back just a little bit. The part from the rail encountered that trouble that I just pointed out, going eight and a half furlongs. Here's the reason I went with this horse. Cesar Figaro winning races at a 30-cent clip, but when he teams up with Edgar Gonzalez, they win at a 25-cent clip. This horse didn't run that badly. Rothgar was the one to beat. I actually haven't as the one to beat in there, but I just thought Starship Wizard, I had a lot of success. We'll see how this horse runs today. Yeah, I, I mean, he's going to be running on late. He seems to be at the mercy of the pace. I don't know how much of there is in here, but you said it. This barn, we haven't seen like a huge sample from Cesar Figueroa. I can't remember a horse that he's put in the wrong spot. And the number three horse in here uh, is my man Flint moves to the Catherine Davy Bond after bumping repeatedly when finishing fourth behind with that race right there. So, uh, uh, you know, that uh, last time out, connection, keep the status quo. They got Jesus Rios. So I'm thinking coming out of the race, you like Rothgar. There's a couple yeah. of different ways you can go in there. No, and that's the beauty of replays and the, the eyes of the beholder because right. you could have you saw other things yeah. in, that, in that spot too. Race number eight this afternoon is uh, this one is about a mile 70 yards on the Tapita. Allowance optional claim of three rolls and up. That tag is 25,000. Eight will go to the post in here. We'll kick it off with number seven, Parkland, who I had at the top, who goes to the Rohan Crichton Barn after the claim steps up a level after using his speed to defeat those 20 claimers at the distance. And one of them really game fashion, if you go back and look at it, this barn is 36% with new claims, and you're getting Edgar Zayas in the saddle today. So adding all that stuff up looks pretty good.
it to me. I agree. Rohan is, it does nothing wrong, and, and this horse is good enough as it was, and now he goes into that bar. Now, Ray, Ray Yanez is pretty darn good, too, so, uh, you know, can we improve off him? I don't know if he needs to, but certainly Parkland is one of several in here in the mix and one of several that I used on my late pick five ticket. Uh, you did put the number five Venezuelan Triumph had a little bit of trouble in its last race. A yeah. lot of bit of trouble. We'll show it to you here. It's going to be in and around the first turn. He's going to be the four horse here. Uh, so here's the start. This is the Bears Den. It's a stakes race on the Tapita for the three year old. And you're going to see him here. He's going to be in between horses in a second, the four horse. And uh, he just didn't have a smooth run of it into the turn. He's already kind of checking just a little bit, and it's only going to get worse here. I don't really think he liked being in between here, and now he's going to get, there it is right there, and there it is again. And then he kind of has to go outside. He even had to, like, look at this. He's looking around now. Miguel Vasquez, so not ideal. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you saw this or not, mm. but uh, Grant David in California Frolic, who ran 1-2 mm. in this race, they went up to the Grade 3 Virginia Derby, and I think they ran 2-3 three or 3-4 three, in that Grade 3 on the turf up there. I didn't realize that. That that's Colonial Down, so, so. That's good keying off that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that is the number five horse near Venezuelan Triumph. Yeah, so take note of that. And he's a horse that fits nicely with this group on paper. The number four horse in here we both have in second, and that is Lake Amamba, who's dropping into, I think, to a winning situation yeah. after following back-to-back -back victories. That was against 35 claiming types with a stalk, the action fifth. That was that overnight handicap going a mile 70 yards. Dan Hurtak, MCL Jaramillo riding for him. I, I don't know if I remember the, them, them riding for him. Well, I, I don't remember, but I, it says in my form they're three for five together, oh, so that's pretty yeah, good. Well, so look so, at that. Yeah. Yeah. Look out, and he's got yeah. a win on this horse, too, back. And uh, trainer Danny Hurtek's been having a phenomenal Royal Palm meet, and this horse likes the Tapita. Two for three, absolute must use. Well, if you like Parkland, go like I do, and Brian doesn't, you sort of have to look at the number three. He's a kitten beating the neck by Parkland. Two stats back. Renews that rivalry after rallying to finish second against those starter optional claimers. Jose Garofalo's got Lionel Reyes named to ride today. Yeah, he's a major player as well. He's 0 for 5 on the Tapita, but he has run second three times. We got to give Yamato a mention. <laughs> Yamato might pass out in the starting gate when he looks over and doesn't see Lamplighter Jack. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> lost to him four times in a row. And I'll tell you what, Lamplighter Jack is an absolute freak on the Tapita. The fact that Yamato finally gets in a race yeah. without him says you better <laughs> take notice of him too. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Lamplighter Jack also beat Parkland yes. one at a time. So uh, Lamplighter Jack uh, sitting there reaping the uh, <laughs> enjoyment of not running today, but just has those four in a row. Uh, the last race today, mile in the 16th on the Tapita about distance, maiden claim is three and up, 25,000. Uh, your top pick was Scratch, the number five win, no joke. I, I'm going to start it off with the six Black Seal. Stretching out to the mile in the 16th on the Tapita, rallying to finish second. I thought it was a promising debut going five and a half furlongs. It's a lightly raced three-year-old, and I'm giving this horse the nod because all the previous runners in this race are struggling to break made. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, for a barn that doesn't win a lot of races, Arnold Dobler did win a couple. Uh, I think it's probably been two or three weeks ago now. Um, this horse ran all right, and it was a pretty fast race for the level. If the buyers are your thing, he ran a 59 that day, and a 59 puts him in the mix as it is, and you're allowed to think he might move forward. So listen, I'm picking up what you're putting down in there. You went with the number two, scratched into the number two strong again, stretching out today after following a pair of okay thirds with that stalk and fade 50. His horse finds an ideal spot to rebound. This horse is sort of there at the wire, Needs a little racing luck. Maybe it was just the level of competition to get this one on. To yeah, score. I mean, I, I think he's, him and Sir Samuel are the best two horses on paper, but their margin for error is about like this, and they are combined 0 for 21. So it's, again, you know, you want to look at a horse like Black Seal. There's some legs there to go on. Yeah, that's what I was doing here. Like uh, Sir Samuel, yeah. as you said, zero for 12. You know, so uh, maybe you get a horse that ran okay. He's going to stretch out. And the barn has been sneaky good with a couple of wins over the last uh, uh, couple of uh, weeks. So maybe they'll get it done. I was looking for a price. So that's how we see that nine race card today with the $250,000 gross jackpot guarantee. But... Of course, we're not done without the lightning round this afternoon. And as we do each and every Friday when we kick off the week, is check out those standings. So uh, what do we got going here? And as we do each and every Friday, we try to mix something up with, for good TV because Miguel Vasquez <laughs> is gone. Uh, but he did crack 100, and I thought that yeah. was significant. So. 
Uh, absolutely, uh, you know, good, 104 victories. But look at Lionel Reyes, yep. just 71 victories. Edgar, Edgar Perez, of course, MCL Harabio back in yes. action again. So, and, and that's good to see. And now I think this is his third, third second weekend now back. So yeah. I, I would think, you know, he's got his legs under him now a little bit too, and he's going to start firing because he's as, when he when he's on his game as good as we have here. Yeah, triple digits. I yep. mean, that's something, that's you know, number. 104 wins is pretty nice. And uh, what do we got for uh, trainers now? We got, uh, well, we got Osafi on yeah, top. Yeah, but we got a good runner up. Uh, you know, the, the podium is still in question. And Rohan and Jose D'Angelo had his own little pick three last mm -hmm. Sunday, uh, Jose D'Angelo. Mm -hmm. So that's a good battle there as well. Yeah, I mean, you look 28, 27, 24, 20. So it's happy, of course, the runaway winner here. But yeah. uh, otherwise, uh, a great meet for all those guys that are running second down to fifth or fourth or whatever it is. So, yeah, so what else we got going on? Well, I got Rothgar going on in race seven as my best bet of the day. And uh, four to one on the morning line. There's a scratch in that race. We'll see. That's a good race to have a best bet, to be honest with you, because it could be a spread race. What do you got going on? I got the two horse in that same exact All race, right. Starship. Well, the one horse, uh, Starship Wisdom at six to one. That's the one for, uh, you know, good connections like there. So we'll see if we can get that one best bet, six to one on the morning line. See if I can wake it up. Now you're a long shot? Long shot is uh, astonishing Annabelle earlier on in the card, the maiden running against winners. Uh, I'm not going to say what I said earlier because I probably couldn't say it again or get it right. But it's just odd <laughs> yeah. that she's in there, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, and I, I've gotten the last yeah. race, that horse. I, I'm trying to wake this one up, 10 to 1, Black Seal, just because it ran okay. And the previous winners, as we mentioned, haven't done fared that well, yeah. we'll say. Uh, tomorrow, we've got a stakes. I see you got it on your page there, the sheer drama. And it could also be called the Gang's All Here okay. because um, the top several finishers of that overnight handicap last time, we'll show it to you here. And that was one by Don't Get Cozy, who is back, and she's going to run them all down in the lane. I'll tip my hand a little bit. I thought Corey, the two-horse here, who gets run down in the lane, I thought she ran cool. It's a good race, Ron. It's a good renewal. And another horse that wasn't in this race that I think you had as your best bet of the day. I know you picked no, this horse. No. Mary Quite Contrary is back, too. Yeah, that three-year-old has been very impressive mm -hmm. to me, and I'm going to key off that performance in the Azalea, where she's second to a really nice horse in the last leaf. Yep. So she's a three-year-old, but this time of the year, I'm not too uh, worried no. about the old, you know, younger horses going against older horses. So maybe I get a little bit of a price. So Luca Panici has run that uh, two wins. Luca Panici has been on them, but that is tomorrow. Yep, but today, opening day uh, up in Maryland at Pimlico, and so that's great to see they've got uh, they're going through um, the end of September and they've got two big big days one of them is tomorrow one of them's on September 24th they got a grade three turf race tomorrow as well yeah and that, that turf course is just fantastic yeah. looking when it hasn't been used that's Pimlico the old hilltop so uh, that'll be the full stakes schedule schedule uh, good to be on the grass up there so uh, is that it that is it. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, so we're done. Right we'll on be, time. Yeah, we'll be done. Turn it over to our buddy Pete Aiello with the scratches and changes. Uh, go. The Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance is really the vehicle for the transition for our uh, racehorses coming off the track into uh, a second career and, and safe environment for, for these horses when they're done racing. I've been passionate about racehorses my whole life, animals in general, and without the TAA to provide that oversight, there would be a big void in terms of making sure that we have this ongoing safe environment for our off the track racehorses. excited about the undertaking and excited about working with our, our board and, and our, our team at the TAA to continue um, the wonderful progress that has been made. So I'm very excited about what the future holds.